Hi students, this is Nirmal, faculty of physical science in Vijayata High School, Pedwadlapudi. First of all, I would like to congratulate all the students, those who promoted from 8th standard to 9th standard. Students, in 9th standard, we are having 7 subjects are there. Among the physical science is one of the subject. Today, I would like to introduce what are the syllabus is present in our physical science. Students, the physical science is classified into two parts. One is physics and the second one is chemistry. Students, what are the topics that are present in physics and what are the topics that are present in chemistry? And I would like to introduce each and individual chapters. First of all, we will see what are the topics are present in our physics part. Students, there are eight chapters are given in our physics part. The first chapter is motion, second chapter is loss of motion, third one is reflection of light at curved surfaces, fourth one is gravitation, fifth one is floating bodies, sixth one is work and energy, seventh one sound and the eighth chapter is units and graphs. There are four units are given in chemistry part. So, the first chapter is is matter pure and the second one is atoms and molecules and the third one is what is inside atom and the fourth one is chemical reactions and equation. Students, today I would like to introduce what are the terms, what are the phenomena, what are the laws and what are the concepts are present in our total 12 units. We are having total 12 units, 8 in physics part and 4 in chemistry part. Now, we will see what are the terms and what are the topics that are involved in the first chapter motion. Students, motion is a very important chapter in the 9th standard because we cannot imagine without a motion our society is there. So, in this chapter we are going to discuss about what is meant by motion and how can we define a rest and what is meant by relative, relativity is there. In this chapter, we are also going to discuss about the certain physical uh, quantities like uh, distance, displacement, speed, velocity, average speed, average velocity, uniform motion, non-uniform motion and also we are going to discuss about the circular motion, we are going to discuss about some of the quantity that means acceleration, uniform acceleration and mostly we are going to discuss in this chapter is some equations of motion. That means a body which is traveling with a uniform acceleration, the body having follow certain equation that means loss, that means those are called as a equations of motion. So, in the first chapter itself deals about the motion and uh, its part that means the uh, distance, uh, displacement, uh, velocity, speed all these things. Then coming to the second chapter, loss of motion. Students, the first one, first one that motion of the ball which is uh, dropping from a inclined plane was studied by a Galileo scientist. And later the total motion and applications of force was uh, explained briefly by uh, Sir Isaac Newton. We can calculate our period before Isaac Newton and after Isaac Newton. Newton has been changed revolution in our total physics part is there. In this chapter, we are going to discuss about uh, Newton's loss of motions. That means the first law itself uh, gives the information about the phenomena of uh, inertia. So, students, in this chapter, we are going to discuss about the inertia is there. And what is the relationship between inertia and mass? This inertia is nothing but called as a Newton's first law of motion. In this chapter is also we are going to discuss about the momentum. Student, this is very, very important. We have to learn about the momentum is there. This momentum, we know that is the loss of momentum is also present. Is By using of loss of momentum, that means conservation of momentum, we are going to derive an equation, spectacular equation for the force that is equal to F is equal to mg. This is called Newton's second law is there. 
and next one coming to the third equation of motion that is the famous physical phenomena is there. every action there is an equal and opposite reaction it is called as a Newton's third law and how we can apply these Newton's third law in our daily life situations so rockets works on the principle of uh, Newton's third law is there students in this total chapter we are going to discuss about uh, Newton's and laws of motion and one more spectacular phenomena we are going to discuss in this chapter is called as a impulse so impulse is one of the spectacular phenomena we can observe in our daily life is there how these impulse force should be affect on the objects is there then coming to the next chapter reflection of light at curved surfaces is there student in the eighth standard we have been discussed about the phenomena of light the first and important phenomena of light is a reflection it is called as a surface phenomena is there and what is meant by reflection is there if light travels from one medium to another medium after reflection it bounces back into the same medium this phenomenon is called as a reflection these reflection phenomena we studied in the eighth standard on the plane surfaces in the plane surface we have been discussed about the loss of reflection and we proved the loss of reflection is also but in ninth standard we are going to discuss about uh, the reflection phenomena on curved surfaces that means a curve is a part in a sphere so how these reflection will be takes place there are two types of uh, uh, reflecting surfaces we are having in the curved surface one is a concave surface and second one is a convex surfaces if any surface which should uh, reflect uh, that means reflect the light it should be acts as a mirror we know that one so we are going to discuss in this chapter how the images are formed in a concave mirror and how the images are formed in a convex mirror and what are the properties of image formed by a concave mirror and the properties of image formed by a convex mirror so we are going to discuss about all these things in this uh, chapter reflection of light at curved surface in this chapter also we are going to discuss about uh, sign conventions and the mirror formula how we can use and next how we can prepare a solar cooker all these things we are going to discuss in the chapter number three reflection of light at curved surface then coming to the fourth chapter gravitation is there student it is a uh, very interested to study about the celestial bodies like earth moon sun all these things is there so in this chapter we are going to discuss about one spectacular law that is called as a universal gravitational law this universal gravitational law holds anywhere in the universe so what is meant by universal gravitational law in the universe every object attracts every other object with a certain force this force is directly proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between these two objects. In this chapter is also we are going to discuss about the circular motion, uniform circular motion and some of the terms uh, angular displacement, angular velocity and angular acceleration. One basic most important we know that is called earth is always pulls any object this is the gravitational force that is called as a acceleration due to gravity. On what factor does the acceleration due to gravity depends? Does the acceleration due to gravity depends on mass or not? These things we are going to discuss and also we are going to discuss about the stability of an object that means the center of gravity. What is meant by center of gravity? How the center of gravity shifts? and uh, what basis does the center of gravity is depends what happens if the center of gravity changes its position all these things we are going to discuss in the chapter is called as a gravitation then coming to the fifth chapter is called as a floating body students we know some object should be floats on water how they can able to float on what basis does they are able to float in this chapter we are going to discuss all the properties of a floating bodies for this we have to know certain physical quantities those are called as a density and second one is called as a relative density and other one is called as a pressure so what is meant by density and what is meant by relative density and what basis does that one body should be able to float on other body is there so a body which is having the least density should float on the higher density particle for example if you can try to mix the water and petrol the petrol should float on the water 
because the petrol lies on the surface of the water because the density of petrol is least when compared with the water is there. And in this chapter also we are going to discuss about the how the pressure, how we can measure the atmospheric pressure constructing of a barometer and some of the important laws that is called as a Archimedes principle and one more is their Pascal's law how we can utilize these laws, where we can utilize lifting of heavy weights by using of a hydraulic lift, Brahma press, all these we are going to discuss in the chapter is called as a floating bodies. Then coming to the next chapter, sixth, work and energy. This energy and work are both are very related. We need to do certain work. For doing of work, we need energy. In this chapter, we are going to discuss what is meant by work and what is meant by energy. When we will say an object is uh, done an object, done a uh, work, what are the units of work and what are the how we can measure the work by using of any principle or something. The next uh, definition of energy is there. What is meant by energy? Energy is nothing but the capacity to do work is called as a energy. There are different types of energies we are having students. The first one is called as a potential energy is there. Potential energy means the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its position. For example, this is there, a coconut we can hold on our head, but a same coconut is dropped from a tree, then what happens? It can easily break our head. So, the energy is due to its height. Some objects are possess uh, energy by virtue of its motion. So, such kind of energy is called as a kinetic energy. In this chapter we are going to derive what is the formula for potential energy and what is the formula for the kinetic energy and what are its application. All these terms we are going to discuss in the chapter work and energy. Then coming to the seventh chapter sound. Sound is a form of energy. In eighth standard also we have been learned about the sound. So, sound is very essential for us to communicate uh, our feelings from one person to another person. So, how that sound should be produced? We know vibrating bodies can produce sound is there. How the sound could, should be travels from one place to another place it is nothing but called as a propagation of sound. How sound should be propagated from one place to another place? We know the sound is form, uh, can be traveled in the form of a wave. So, in this chapter we are going to discuss about uh, how many types of waves. There are two types of waves we are having now in this, uh, in this chapter, uh, the transverse waves and longitudinals, what are formed in transverse waves and what are formed in longitudinal waves and also there is a formation of uh, stationary waves uh, and some phenomena of light like pitch and loudness uh, and some of we know that is called eco sounds. Uh, by using of sounds also we can uh, get the navigation that is called as a sonar. And different types of sounds we are having that is infrasonic sounds and ultrasonic sounds and audible sound. The ranges of these sounds, all these terms we are going to discuss in the chapter sound. Then coming to the last chapter of physics, it is called as a units and graphs. Students we are know that is equal there are physical quantities are classified into two categories, fundamental quantities and derived quantities. What are meant by fundamental quantities? The quantities which should not be dependent on other quantity is called as a fundamental quantity. The quantities which should not, should depends upon other quantities, depends on other quantities are called as a derived quantities. So, in this chapter we are going to discuss fundamental quantities and derived quantities and how we can measure fundamental quantities and derived quantities, units of fundamental quantities and derived quantities and we are having different types of systems is there. How we can convert one unit into another unit are there and also we are going to learn how to construct a graph between two quantities that means one is a dependent quantity and other one is uh, independent quantity. So, graphs are very useful for us to give a relationship between the two things that means uh, two quantities. The relationship between uh, dependent quantity and independent quantity. What are the rules we have to follow while writing of your units and uh, constructing of your graphs? All these things we are going to discuss in the chapter 8 units and graph. These are the total 8 chapter students. Once again I will repeat the first chapter is motion and the second chapter is loss of motion and the third one is reflection of light at curved surface, fourth one is the gravitation fifth one is the floating bodies 
sixth one is work and energy, seventh one is sound and eighth one is uh, units and graphs. Now coming to the chemistry part, the first one is, is matter pure and second one is atoms and molecules and the third one is what is inside atom and the fourth one is chemical reactions and equation. So, what are the topics are present in the first chapter is matter is pure. Students we know the substances are classified two parts pure substances and a mixture. That means the total atoms that means the same atoms the substance which consists of a same atoms are called as a pure substances. The substance which consists of a different types of atoms are called as a mixtures is there. Again these mixtures are classified into two parts homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. What are meant by homogeneous mixtures and what are meant by heterogeneous mixture? Homogeneous mixture means the mixture which consists of a two or more substances which we cannot separate by using of a simple physical methods that is called as a homogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous mixture means it is a mixture which consists of a two or more substances, we can separate them by using of a simple physical methods. For example, a cup of tea is there. This cup of tea is consist of a different types of substances, milk is present, tea powder is present and a tea, is, a tea powder and sugar is present. But we cannot separate milk after preparation of tea, we cannot separate milk and we cannot separate tea powder and we cannot separate sugar. Tea is called as a homogeneous mixture. And second you can take a glass of water, in that glass of water you just drop a, a pinch of uh, sand. The sand should be dissolved in water? No. So, we can easily separate the sand from the water by using of a filter paper is there. So, the sand in a water is called as a heterogeneous mixture. In this homogeneous mixtures again classified into solutions, in that solutions also we are having uh, suspensions and collides is there. So, it's this by using of these solutions there is also we have used to how we can prepare a saturated solution and how we can prepare a unsaturated solution and how we can prepare as a super saturated solution, what is meant by solution and what is meant by solvent and what is meant by solute. How we can increase the solubility of a solute, all these things we are going to discuss in this chapter. In this chapter is also we are going to discuss how we can separate the mix, the constant in a mixture. We know that is equal to two types of mixture, miscible mixtures and immiscible mixtures. And what kind of methods to use to separate a substances from a mixture is there, that is nothing but called as a some methods, sublimation is one of the metal and next one is the chromatography is there and next one is the distillation and another one is called as a fractional distillation. So, in this chapter we are going to discuss about pure substances, mixtures, homogeneous mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures, solutions, collides, suspensions, separation methods that means uh, sublimation distillation and fractional distillation all these things and all these topics we are going to discuss in the first chapter is matter pure. Then coming to the second chapter atoms and molecules. Students we know an atom is a indivisible particle which cannot be separated that means uh, divided into further that is called as a an atom. The combination of uh, atom should can provide as a molecules. How we can give the naming of a atom that means we are giving a symbols for each and individual atoms. For examples we can see the symbol of hydrogen is H, the symbol of oxygen is O, the symbol of uh, sodium is Na and how we can give the symbols for that means the symbol will give based upon the first letter and some symbols may give based upon the second prominent letter and some symbols we can give based upon name of the Latin. For certain letters uh, that means alphabet which should not use it for a symbols. For example, if you can see A, X, Z, these three letters are not used as a symbol for any other uh, any element is there, why we cannot use these letters, all these things. And next, how we can write a molecular formula? For writing of a molecular formula, we need to know about the valency. By using of valency, the method of crisscross method, by using of a crisscross method, we can write a molecular formula. In this chapter is also, we are going to discuss about the atomicity, 
and also we are going to discuss about the mass number and also we are going to discuss about the mole concept is there. So, this chapter we are going to discuss uh, all these things and one more is there law of conservation of mass that means mass is neither created nor destroyed it disappears in one form and again reappears into the another form is there. So, this chapter deals about the atoms and molecules. The next coming to the third chapter what is inside atom is there. Students we know atom is the smallest indivisible particle which cannot be divided further. But there is also some particles which are present inside an atom those are called as a subatomic particle. Students we are having more than 60 subatomic particle but the very prominent one three are very important those three are called as a electrons, protons and neutron. In this chapter we are going to discuss about the subatomic particles like electrons, protons and neutrons. How we can denote the these subatomic particles? What is their mass and what is their charge and what is their E by M value and how these subatomic particles are inserted in an atom. For this we are going to discuss about the structure of atom. There are different scientists has been given the structure of atoms that means different atomic theories J. J. Thompson, Rutherford and next one coming to the Niels Bohr all these has been given the different atomic theories. How these electrons are arranged in an atom? That means, so we can write uh, the systematic arrangement of electrons into proper orbitals is called as a electronic configuration. So, in this chapter we are going to discuss all these uh, different types of atomic structure writing of electronic configuration and studying about the properties of uh, sub, uh, subatomic particles. Next coming to the chapter number 4 chemical reactions and equation. Students, in our daily life we can observe so many chemical reactions is there. So, a chemical reaction we are always expressing in terms of a symbol is there. A writing of a chemical reaction in terms of symbols and formulas is called as a chemical reaction. Students, in this chapter we are going to discuss we need to balance a chemical reaction. Why should we need to balance a chemical reaction? Because to satisfy the conservation of mass, mass is neither created nor destroyed. So, to satisfying this law, we need to uh, uh, balance a chemical reaction. That means, how many number of atoms that are participated in a reaction, the same number of atoms that need to product, in need to present in product. So, for in order to satisfying this law, we need to balance a chemical reaction. How we can balance a chemical reaction? What information does the chemical reaction gives us? Balanced chemical reaction will give us. And how many types of reaction? Students we are having different types of reaction. Chemical combination reaction, chemical displacement reaction, chemical double displacement reaction, chemical decomposition reactions, how they can be happened. All these types of reactions also we are going to discuss in this chapter. And two important reaction that is called as a oxidation and a reduction reactions. In this reaction, in this chapter we are going to discuss about the oxidation and reduction reactions and the oxidation reactions in our daily life. Students, the rusting of metals like if you can throw an iron particle into the atmosphere during the rainy season, we can observe rust is formed on the surface of the iron metal. This rust is uh, nothing but due to the oxidation reaction. The rusting of metals is called as a corrosion. How can we prevent the metals from corrosion? By using of different methods. So, the corrosion of a silver is called as a tarnishing is there. And some more oxidation reactions we can observe. In our home, we can the spoiling of food. The spoiled, uh, spoiled food gives us a, a dirty odor is there, the bad smell. The spoiling of food is called as a rancidity is there. The rancidity is due to the oxidation reactions. And these all reactions which occurred in our daily life due to the oxidation reactions, how we can prevent these reactions. All these things we are going to discuss in the chapter number 4, chemical reactions and equation. Students, there are 4 units in chemistry. First one is is matter pure, second one is atoms and molecule, third one is what is inside an atom and fourth one is chemical reactions and equation. Students, total number of units in the ninth standard is 12 units, 8 in physics and 4 in chemistry. So, this is the syllabus of 9th uh, class physical science.